What's going on, traders? Welcome to my stream. Today is um, Saturday. Gonna do a quick uh, weekend recap. What happens in the market last week? Um, it's been um, pretty interesting. Every single day we had a couple of movers. Um, every single day. So it does require work. It does require you to have full batteries. Um, and, um, some of these movers really worked out really good. Um, I think I'm getting myself psyched out on like Monday and I'm psyched out on Thursday. So I think I oversized on Thursday and I think I, um, what I did on Monday on Monday, I didn't cut my losses. So, you know, the only stock I really, so we're going to start out with, um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Welcome to the nightly stream. I wasn't really uh, gonna do a live one, but I guess we're doing one. Uh, so uh, make sure you write your questions um, in the chat. I'm gonna go review them at the end of the stream. So we had OCEA that uh, gapped up. Um, so Monday, Monday we had OCEA. We had a daily breakout of 250. Right about here, daily breakout of 275. And once it was it cleared that area, it was like off to the races. Uh, you can see so that, you know, on Monday we had OCEA, gap scanner, 3.2 milli float. We had fun here. Uh, so basically, we have Fufu, a bunch of tickers. We had Monday. Uh, so... We had Osea here, downturn break, 250 and 275. After that, it was off to the races. Um, nice downtrend break right there. We had fun here. I didn't really trade fun, but it pushed out of the open. It was gapping up. It pushed this pre-market break out of 937. Hit 16. I didn't really trade this one. Just pushed out of the open on Monday. And um, after that, it got, um, I don't know, it was just choppy. Uh, and it reached these, this downtrend resistance over here, which is 1650. If you draw a line over here, you see the 1650 there. I just saw that. So that would have been a nice short over here in the 16 and cover into the 13. If that would have been pretty nice. Um, so we got the only problem I did on Monday. I pretty much bought QNRX here. I don't think I had energy to trade Monday, so you know I was buying QNRX because I thought this is this is going to be the low floater of the day, and soon enough, uh, the the one number one low floater on Monday was QNRX. Uh, you can see so here that QNRX so. The float of this stock of QNRX in the morning was 500,000. And uh, the volume on that day was way beyond um, way beyond the float. You can see so here, actually, there there's 900,000 outstanding. So um, so I was thinking, I think my, my scanner, when I looked at QNRX, I think uh, QNRS over here. I can't even see it on the gap scanner, the midday. Anyway, the point being is, um, you know, just because it's a low float underneath 500,000 shares does not mean it's going to go straight up. That's probably the theory of the story here. Uh, there's certain things called naked short selling, and uh, and they naked short sell the crap out of this one. Um, I was not really expecting it at all, especially with, um, with, uh, I think it had news that day. Um, QNRX had news, uh, QNRX had news that day it was on Monday. I think it was March, uh, FDA clearance. There we go. So just because it has news, see here, March right here march fda clearance march 4th i think that was march 4th that's right so monday we had news fda clearance and that was that was pretty good 
um, and um, and uh, just because it has FDA clearance does not mean that it's going to go up. It's, it can just sell off. Uh, this is, um, you know, part of my strategy is predicting, um, you know, abnormalities in the numbers. So QNRX was a really tiny float. 500,000 and it was rotating a bunch. I think the pre-market volume was around, I don't know, five or seven. It was under 10 million, but it was like heavily rotated in the pre-market. So I thought since the flow was so small, you know, it's pretty hard to get since the flow is so small, since it has news, since it has a decent clean chart, it's going to go straight up. So I originally did think it's going to go long. I didn't really think is going to break this downtrend and sell off. So that was like the start of the week, which started my mom and day pretty crappy. And uh, after that, I don't think I had enough energy to trade fun, nor I did trade Osea, but I did, I did see that in the, um, in the pre mark in the pre market. So I kind of took my loss in QNRX and I moved on and I closed out the day. Uh, usually, if I um, have a red stock on that day, I usually don't trade that day anymore. So, you know, a couple of things you want to might, might want to put on your radar, just because it's a low float, just because um, it has news, just because it's rotated, just because it has a clean chart, does not mean it cannot go down. It can gap up 80, 100 percent, and uh, it can go down. It's just, um, that's the nature of the business. Uh, it's called naked short selling. I, I actually discovered this thing uh, while looking at my other thing. It's called naked short selling. Just it, they, will, they will short a more amount of the supply. So since even though the supply was so small of high 500,000 shares or 400,000 shares, I mean, right about here, you can see that, you know, they pretty much naked short sell at the open around twice the float many times over on these one minute candles. I mean, this was all naked short selling because I don't really know where this volume came in from because because you can see on the daily there is no really any resistance over here anywhere except over here somewhere. And uh, that's like seven million and we were way be beyond seven million. So they didn't really, they didn't really give it a chance to go. And you know, you're gonna, you're gonna stare at level two. Are you gonna stare at the, your gap scanner? You're gonna look at them, and um, you're gonna see, you know, that an 80, 60 percent gapper that's rotating the float that is, has a that's a micro float that has a low news on a Monday and everybody's watching and sells off. That kind of started my week a little uh, interesting. So after that, I pretty much closed out the day and I had two opportunity here in Fun and Osea. Osea actually happened after nine o'clock and uh, pretty much hit 475. That, that looks like a beauty. And we had Fun here that broke the pre-market high of 927. And ran, as you can see, so fun. You know, it's very important to put the floats underneath 5 million on a separate scanner or a separate screen because these stocks, I mean, they're, they were heavily, um, I mean, the volume in it was, as you can see, 82 million and fun was 69 million. So they rotated the crap out of these two stocks that day. And um, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I have no doubt about it. That's pretty good. And those are the tickers to trade. I avoided Jagex. Flows too high. And I think MNTS, you can see so here, MNTS moved in the aftermarket. I didn't really trade this um, this thing over here, but I saw the NASA news. That was, that was, that was pretty good. I didn't trade on MSDS. Moving on to Tuesday. This is actually a pretty good chart. Um, you can see, you know, I run a business. And I trade usually mostly every day and I show up mostly every day. But, you know, there's a cycle of trading and I've seen a lot of traders go through the cycle. The cycle is pretty simple. I mean, you act, you pretty much, you make a trade. 
you have an outcome, you reset, and then you pretty much observe. So that's kind of like uh, paint. Let's see if we can get this thing over here. So we can uh, screen, where is it? Sniping tool. Let me put this over here. So, so I'll give you another, the three P's of trading. I never really understood this one until I blew up a couple of accounts. And um, uh, the thing about, you know, this is your trade. So this, so you, so there's a cycle of trading. A lot of people, you know, I see a lot of traders and they're able to, you know, reset all the freaking time really quickly, depending on your skill. But, you know, sometimes you just, um, you just, um, you're a slow uh, recovery. And you, so you trade, there's your trading. Uh, so, so this is the cycle. You have an, an outcome, outcome. Like sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're tired, you're just not going to trade well. You have the reset and you have the observe, observe. So this is kind of like uh, the, um, the thing that I have to say to you guys. So, you know, a lot of beginner traders, they don't have the, um, what happens to a lot of beginner traders, they don't have, a, what is it called, a playbook. So, you know, a lot of traders come and say, you know, they're constantly bleeding money. And uh, it's because they're stuck in this uh, loop. I mean, they trade, they have an outcome, and then they go back to trading. You know, and they're stuck in this vicious cycle, uh, endless cycle of trading and outcome, uh, and uh, they can't get out of it. This is how most traders lose all the time. They're they're only over here. This is how traders lose all the time. Because I've studied a lot of um, you know, this is this is how this is this is your you know kryptonite. If you're into this kind of, you know, you trade. You outcome, trade, outcome, trade, outcome. This will pretty much uh, create you, make you broke. Because, uh, you know, you, sh you should not be doing this. You should, uh, you know, taking the time to understand that there's a cycle and there's a process. And there's, you know, somebody you need to learn this from. Or, you know, study how to do brain surgery for, like I do, for 15 years or 10 years or whatever. So this is, uh, you know, your, your kryptonite over here. So, you know, ideally you want to, you know, reset. So when I have like a red day or a red stock, which I did have a red day or a red stock, um, as you can see, I did, you know, I wasn't expecting them to naked short sell. Uh, let's call it a 70% gapper. I mean, they naked short sell all the way down on fda fast track and uh you know i cut losses and um but that was that it uh, really doesn't really happen that often uh when uh you have something like this so you know it, so instead of going back to trading i just left and that's what you should do or you know you should go back to you know be a smart trader um be a smart trader like this is your kryptonite and this is what a smart trader does he leaves he resets he backs to observing and then you make another trade that's kind of like what i did so i left so that was like my thing that's kind of like what i did so soon enough on tuesday I didn't really trade anything because I just had a big headache and I was off my game. And you had Osea here and you had fun here. So QNRX then and on Tuesday I, I traded a I traded uh, AISP. Traded pretty well, came in came in at 260. I sold it at 350. That was a great trade. Um you can see AISP made a new high, bought some 260. This is a chat alert, stop 250, worked all good. And uh, that, that that put me up, you know, I just made up my loss. 
My other stock that I pretty much went long on Tuesday was the SIA, day two continuation, a little bit choppy, only made 10%. As you remember, yesterday OCR ran pretty hugely because I was watching it yesterday and I didn't take advantage of it. So I was like, okay, let me just get in on day two continuation. Soon enough, we went to $8. So it was a green day overall. Uh, you can see so here, AISP ended up hitting $7 that day. And uh, I didn't really make any money on this one besides, you know, 260 to 350 because I was just not here and I was not really... I mean, how many times does a VWAP reclaim happen like this? Um, I can count them on my fingers. Like, in the bear market, you can count them on the fingers. The past two years, we didn't have that many VWAP reclaims. We didn't have any zombies. But uh, it seems like we're getting more zombies. So AISP was a zombie. We, we trap a bit under VWAP and we rip. And uh, I traded Osea and 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 AISP, and I'm like green. So far, so good, right? I'm I'm green. So you know, um, you know, resetting. Make sure I reset. That's good. And then Wednesday rolled around. I went in. Um, I saw a JL over here. There you go. RVSN. Let me see what I traded that day because I don't remember. RVSN hasn't bounced those 15. I made one other great trade here. Made 70 cents on RVSN. This was a chat alert. 9, 10. RVSN hasn't bounced since 15. Potential long first green day bounce trigger $2. Got some RVSN 230. Stop 220. Oh, I think John also went in. This is the first green day bounce. Part of my playbook. Breaks yesterday's high. Holds yesterday's high. Low float underneath 5 million, has news, volume, hasn't bounced in a while. Next you know, we have a big ass bounce in our VSN. I think I bought it at like 230 over here. And I sold most at $3 and that was the trade. Soon enough, it went to $5. Uh, it's not that you can't make money in the market. Is What you want to do is not blow up your account. A lot of traders... Um, get into this cycle they trade outcome trade outcome trade outcome trade outcome trade and then they run out of money and uh, i i did this i think in a slower market cycle but right now we're in a hotter market cycle so you can have potentially to make back your loss like say you have a red stock or a red trade um you can make up that loss but in a you know low volatility market like we like we had in the beginning of January, you're unable to make that loss back, and you're just gonna bleed out, and then you know your account is gonna be gone. So, moving on to Thursday. Thursday was really interesting because uh, we had here uh, what what is that? That is so we had a couple of so on on to on Wednesday we had a couple of uh, VWAP reclaims. Uh, this was a not crazy as VWAP reclaim. So on, so on Thursday, 8 p.m. Look at that! Look at that VWAP reclaim. So on Wednesday we had 8 p.m. Um, look at this! Look at this VWAP reclaim. NKGN, and then Meds. Look at this one. So we had, so on Tuesday we had one VWAP reclaim, and on Wednesday we had three VWAP reclaims. So. You can see APM here. We trapped most of the day and we spiked. I didn't trade this one at all. But it had a nice pre-market breakout of six. You can see so over here, this side, this side, this side. That would have been a nice one to long. Uh, then you had PHAG didn't do anything. This one was just too wild for me to trade. That's just too much uh, crazy. And then we had meds here. Meds, I, I goes underneath VWAP, you know, and then breaks pre-market highs. That would have been an interesting long. 14, we hit 21 in meds, 14 to 21. Beautiful, beautiful. So plenty of opportunity on Wednesday to pretty much um, buy these stocks midday. Not a lot of opportunity. We had PHAG pre-market. I didn't trade this one that much, but I do see that it had... A definite merger agreement 
you can see so here so there was an opportunity th three cents up to 90 cents this is something that I would probably would have taken uh, unfortunately I wasn't really trading this one at this time I'm still recharging batteries I think I'm, I'm trading but I'm not like super trading I'm like just trading so you know I'm not like super dialed in but i'm dialed in i'm dialed in enough to take money out of the markets so that's what's important um you know this uh so we had a couple of vwap reclaims there we go there's there's the gap scanner on there's the midday scanner on um on uh this is what's wednesday craziness look at it. 8 apm 452 percent Two milli float, eighty-two million in volume. That's 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 that was the guy of the day on um, Thursday. There we go. APM over here, crazy. Two dollars to like seventeen dollars. We also had lit. Where is lit? Cause I was looking at lit somewhere. There's lit. Look at lit. This was lit was on. Uh, there's there's lit. This is the third three seven. There we go. There's lit there. So we we're in a very hot market on Thursday. Thursday was really interesting. We just had Sarah Bria IMRN. Look at that. Look at that mid pre-market gap scanner. So lit was so I originally on Thursday I didn't do so well on Thursday. I took a loss because um I was trying to go long C E L Z. Was it C L Z? No, it wasn't C L Z. Let me see which one it was. It was this one. Uh, I, th I think it was. I think it was lit. It was lit. Yeah, it was lit. Yeah, yeah, lit. So we had lit here. So lit here. This is this is another problem that I have. So on like Monday, let's call it, you know, I have a loss. That's just fine. Um, and I walk. That's just fine. Make sure you take your loss go back reset maybe you didn't sleep enough maybe you're too hyped up about monday i mean whenever i'm trading monday i'm usually a little bit too hyped up and uh it's just um it's just uh it's just i press the wrong buttons when i'm hyped up so you know don't be too hyped up um, moving on to lit here on Thursday. On Thursday was a great opportunity. I think the only um, I think I was buying it over here at twelve, and then I got stopped out. And then you know I should have stayed stopped out. My idea on Thursday was to go long lit. I think I told the chat that my idea was to go long lit because it was third. You can see so here so let's put it this way so i've been examining data for a long time and i've always seen that you know there's a lot of vwap reclaim activity on thursday i mean there was some vwap activity on wednesday there was a vwap activity on tuesday so you know on thursday i was for sure that it's going to be a vwap activity on vwap reclaim activity as you can see that, you know, on Tuesday we had one VWAP reclaim went and it broke pre-market high, which we call a zombie. On t on Wednesday we had three VWAP reclaims and it turned into a zombie. And then on Thursday I was like, okay, we're going to have another freaking VWAP reclaim. So I looked at the top gainers and I'm like, which one has the possibility of VWAP reclaiming going? And of course, I looked at the one with the lowest float, and I looked at the one with most amount with 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 the volume over here of 4.4 million. So that's what I thought is gonna go. And that that was, and I, then I tried to position myself to go long, and we pushed, and then this VWAP reclaim just squeezed up everybody to hell. Cause I, I knew I knew it was gonna VWAP reclaim. It's just it's just I, I I've been watching I've been watching the pre market scanner and I watched the numbers very well. Uh, on Monday we didn't have 
there were lots of naked short sellers. So on Thursday, I'm like, this is going to be where I reclaim and we're going to do this big ass move here. Um, so I initially was long and then, you know, don't try to short it. <laughs> a lot of traders have a little bit of trouble. See, this is, this is the problem you're going to have. You come into the, to a stock, your official bias is to go long and then it doesn't do what you want it to do. And then stubbornly you go short. Um, that's very dangerous. I've, I've seen this and then you're also oversized. Like it happens to the best traders of the world. I, I've, I've, I've read like, I mean, this podcast that I was reading, what is it called? Uh, I mean, the latest book that I'm reading, this is it, Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. I mean, you have traders here that are multimillionaires and um, just one stupid mistake. It cleans you out. They've been trading for a year or two or three. They made $750,000 or a million dollars in profit. And they fuck up. <laughs> so I'm going to show you like, you know, I didn't really fuck up. But this is a prime example of a fuck up. If you are initially long at $12 and you stop out at $11, don't just be like, I want to change my bias to a short bias just because it's not doing what I want it to do and I want to make my money back. Because you're going to get yourself in a very sketchy situation in which your original bias was to go long and then you go short the stock that you thought is going to be the best uh, bang of your buck. So in this scenario here, while I was long at like 12 and stopped out and I was like, shit, I lost money. Let me make it back and let me go short. <laughs> in this scenario, you're, you should not hold it or add to, to this, to this loser. <laughs> you should take your loss two times and leave. Uh, trading is very simple. You can make money every single day. And um, most people, it's not really that hard to trade. It looks simple. You buy, you sell, you short, you sell. The problem is with trading is that when if you become emotional and you don't follow the rules, like you get stopped out two times, you don't respect your maximum loss, you will have one big loss. And um, it happens to the best of us. It happens to Jesse Giver Livermore. Jesse Livermore, the top trader of the world, made some of the best trades we know to man. But he got broke. <laughs> He's broke. <laughs> so you have to really take your stop loss two times in a stock and move out and you cannot oversize just because you lost money um and that's very hard to do and i've seen some of best traders multi-million dollar traders trying to make back a 45 fifty thousand dollar loss multi-million dollar traders trying to make up on a hundred fifty thousand dollar loss and this is how it happens you originally buy it at 12, you take a loss, you flip short, and then it blows you out. This is how it happens. It's, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to blow up your account. So while I did, um, you know, I did make money on this trade because I ended up adding into the 14 and 15. And I did, you know, pretty much cover at the end of the day. I was not, I was not disciplined. I do not deserve to win that money, even though I'm up some considerably amount of money from that trade. I don't deserve to win that money because I broke the rules. And those rules are 
there for to protect me into my future for not adding to your loser. And a lot of millionaires and multi-traders that have a lot of money would have added, 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 added. And uh, and they would have bailed out and covered into the eight. But what if it kept going? <laughs> what if this piece of shit <laughs> kept going to a hundred? <laughs> it, it happens every day. You make a lot of money in the markets, multiple days in a row, maybe a month, maybe half a year, maybe three months, maybe seven months, maybe nine months. It happens to the best of us. What if this went to 100 and I'm short <laughs> at 1050, <laughs> adding at 14, <laughs> average short 12. <laughs> what if it goes to infinity? It's not fun. It's not fun. So I had the original idea to go long. And uh, I did make money on the trade. But I should not have made any money. I should have just walked. So I was impulsive. I think I oversized. And uh, I think I got one big headache. That's the only ticker I traded. My original bias was to go long. I stopped out. <laughs> then I flipped short. <laughs> then I added. That I covered at the end of the day. I mean, these trades happen. These, this is trading. Sometimes you make a gamble. And sometimes you win on that gamble. Sometimes you lose. But in the long run, making a gamble like I just did, you will have one big ass loss. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the secret to trading. Don't gamble and take your two stop losses and move on. Don't take, don't make it personal and uh, take your two stop losses and move on and survive to trade another day because it is what it is. It was not a great idea to add into this. It wasn't. What if it went higher? So that was like a really good lesson for you guys in lit here. Because what if it went to 100? Even though we sold off, it could have went higher. So we had another, so moving on to, so we had a couple of other movers um, on Thursday now. Th uh, we had a gap up short Cero. I didn't trade because I'm not fast enough. We had Bria here. I didn't trade, way too choppy. And then we had, uh, and we had Cells here. Cells was a great buy on the seven break. I didn't buy that one either. So the only thing I really did trade was, I think on Thursday I traded lit. And that was a long side. And um, I should have flipped short. I, I did flip short. And then I eventually made money on it. But it was just very undisciplined. So moving on to Friday. Um, moving on to Friday. You have Lit, Sarah, and Bria here. Those are all the movers there. Sarah was a gap up short. Bria was. So you can see how my top gainers are populating. How many stocks are over 100%. So we're definitely in a hot market. I mean, it's probably been the hottest market I've seen for the past two years. I mean, we've been getting 100% movers every day. And uh, it doesn't take that many days of no volatility. Like, you can see the gap scanner right here. You can just see the midday gap gainer right here. I mean, we're 100. We have like four stocks over 100%. And I have not seen one or two or three days where the gappers or the middays were not over 30%. So we're in an extremely hot market. I'm not sure if that's going to continue or not, but uh, we're going to continue on to Friday. So Friday, we had really nice volatility here. We had SGD. I didn't trade this one because I was a little bit burned out for training lit. I'm still, I'm still trading, but I'm not, I'm, I'm. I'm uh, passively trading. I'm not fully engaged in the trading. I'm passively trading. And uh, that's just the way I want to be right now. Passively trading. I don't want to... I don't have the uh, power bank to continue on full speed. So I'm just going to reduce my speeds to speed number four or speed number three. 
until I want to speed up my speed. So we had definitely some opportunity here on uh, PBM. This is a pre-market high breakout. I think PBM over here of 315. That was that was on Friday. I think uh, we had a trader buy this pre-market high break of 316. And he sold at $4, I think. I think he did. I don't remember if he did. We had SGD. I didn't trade this one at all. It was just a big freaking halt bogus. I didn't trade this one at all. So, uh, I don't know. I just didn't trade it. I just didn't really trade it. I just wasn't in the flow of things. But we had on Friday, we had AIMD, PMD, SGD. So we have three movers here. The only stocks I did trade was Duo. And that was in aftermarket. And I made like 20% on Duo. Um, pretty, uh, I mean, every, you can see you can see the midday gainers. There you got, you know, three stocks on Friday over 100%. Got about four stocks on Thursday, over 400%, over 100%. And then you have, you know, another, I think this is the sixth. This is the seventh. So this is the sixth over here. So on Wednesday, we have four movers over 100%. And then, um, I mean, tons of movers. Tons of movers, and then this was on Monday. Monday was a very slow day. Monday, only one mover over 100% or two. The point is, you know, the stocks are moving. Um, the stocks are very much moving. You need uh, um, batteries, um, emotional bandwidth, trading capital. You need emotional and uh, trading mental capital to trade these securities. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. I'm like at level four. I mean, I made pretty good money, but I'm not going to push it with mental trading capital uh, being at low levels. You know, it's, you know, I know myself when I'm like have full of energy and I want to push it full speed ahead. This market requires you to push it full speed ahead. But in order to do that, you need A, mental trading capital and um, B you need um, you know <laughs> battery levels so your battery levels should be you know fully charged up and your mental trading capital should be fully charged up I mean it's not it's not like the market's not here the market's here but you have to do the work um, and attend my amazing uh, discord page and because uh, it is here and it's here to stay for another year or two, I think, at least. But, you know, make sure you don't blow up your account because uh, it's very easy to go into very much revenge trading, you know, not following rules. This is why I have those rules, the rules in my six and a half hour course, because you make a false move. You just overstay your welcome. You don't cut your losses. And soon enough, you have one big red day that might take, you know, a week, a month, or, you know, to make it back. That's just the reality of trading. That's not, I'm not really, all successful traders have one or two or ten big losses. And I'm not pushing it when my capital, when my mental trading capital is not at 100%. And trading is already hard enough and you burn out quick from it. So if you're not feeling it and you're, you know, make sure you study up. Because when you're live with your trading capital, um, it's, it's you against you. <laughs> if you didn't study... Your trades are going to tell you that you did not study. Uh, if you overtrade, you're going to see a lot of red there. If you buy the wrong stocks at the wrong time and wing it, you might win from time to time, like in this scenario in Lit. But what if this stock kept going? So you have to... 
you know, it's very hard to have to be disciplined. Especially, so the reason I'm not pushing it full speed is because I don't have the batteries to do it. Because you need full batteries to to honor your stop losses, to honor your your oh uh, to 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 have the mental bandwidth. Sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. So I don't have the mental bandwidth to do it. So when you don't have the mental bandwidth, you know, make a trade or two a day and leave. Even though the market is really hot. This market requires <laughs> a lot of batteries. <laughs> a lot of batteries to trade. A lot of batteries. Like, yeah, a lot of batteries. And and uh, hopefully losing another 15 pounds from all those batteries that you drained. <laughs> If you if you manage to lose <laughs> pounds from trading, <laughs> I, I I go in reverse. The more I trade, the more pounds I gain. It's ridiculous. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a hard job. So if you don't have the mental capital to trade, trade one or two or three times a day. But it's very easy to just go on tilt, blow up, lose your all your money. It's very easy to do that too. This is why I have a six and a half hour course that people, you know, people want just free picks. But, you know, free picks are not going to get you there. The course, the studying is going to get you there. The market is hot to make a lot of money. But if you don't do put in the work, you can win five, six, seven, 15 trades in a row. And then poof, <laughs> it's gone. So that's why, you know, I make this video, make you guys uh, aware, because it's coming. This happens to the best of us. It's not a question of how much you're going to lose in one trade. Is, is you know, whether or not you're going to lose in one trade is like how much you're going to lose in that one trade that just doesn't do what you wanted to do. Anyway, I'm going to make. I'm going to read my uh, comments. Do what you wanted not, to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna read some of my comments. Can you check JL? It's an IPO in uh, February. It closed at something. I don't know. Other stocks on my watch list for for watch list for uh, NKGN and SCL. I don't know. I I don't trade stocks that don't have that are not under. Uh, I don't trade stocks that are not on my gap scanner. I don't really. Let me see. NKGN. That's very nice. Yes, you should put this on your scanner. Yes. That's a 10 milli float. NKGN should be on your scanner. Yes. Hold on. It's an 8 milli float. And uh, the other stock is CLX. Um, CLX, very nice. Yes, it went up. Uh, 10 milli float very nice so yeah put them on your radar put them on your scanner but i'm telling you be very careful in this market this market is going is very cutthroat it's very cutthroat if you're not if you don't have your speed keys in to panic the fuck out you know my panic button is control shift z do you have a panic button? Do you have the maximum loss put in? You know, do you know how to trade two times a ticker and you take two losses and leave? Do you have a maximum loss per ticker? Because trading is not hard. You can win very easily. You can win in this market very easy. The question is, how much are you going to keep after you have one big loss? That's what I want you guys to uh, prepare yourself for because Mark is hot and you can make money. Can you keep it all? <laughs> I don't know. You do the studying, you watch all my videos and you'll, you know, keep a lot more than you did. And uh, you'll join me in my Discord room. Or, I mean, for those people that don't do the work, we know what happens to them. 95% of traders fail. That's uh, that's what the disclaimer said. Make sure you read all that disclaimer because it really says that, you know, 90% of traders fail and, you know, 50% were profitable 
with an average net profit of sixteen thousand dollars. Only, only, only. What does it say? Fifty percent in my disclaimer there. Trading is hard. You can win it all and then lose it all in the next trading day. So <laughs> be very careful. <laughs> all right. See you all later. Make sure you watch all my live streams and all my videos. I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of videos that are coming on onto the channel. Everything is organized and everything has new hashtags and new tags for new traders. Make sure you watch them all and, uh, you know, study up. And uh, I'll show you how to make money. I'll show you how to pretty much keep that money. <laughs> if you watch, the more video you watch, the more you learn these two things. Other than that, I'm going to take a shower and...